Video of the backstage altercation at All In between CM Punk and Jack Perry was shown on AEW Dynamite. The Young Bucks introduced the footage playing into their storyline with FTR, who were associated with CM Punk during his run in the company. They ultimately blamed the backstage situation for their loss at All In against FTR. The footage, which had no audio, showed CM Punk walking up to Jack Perry and engaging in a conversation with him. Punk then suddenly shoved Perry and placed him in a front face lock. Samoa Joe, Jerry Lynn, and Chris Hero, who were in the area, immediately broke up the altercation. CM Punk could be seen talking to someone off camera, as Sanjay Dutt could be seen talking to Jack Perry. Malachi Black walked up to CM Punk to talk to him, the footage ends with CM Punk leaving. In character, the Young Bucks praised Jack Perry calling him a lovable kid. They did not name CM Punk, but said the other individual tried to make it about himself, someone who were good friends with FTR. They insinuated that FTR were the masterminds behind the altercation, though later took it back as it was unprofessional. The altercation ultimately led to Punk's firing from AEW and his return to the WWE a few months later at Survivor Series. Jack Perry was suspended from the promotion and has since been working with New Japan Pro Wrestling, using the moniker The Scapegoat. Matthew ended their segment on Wednesday showing he was wearing a scapegoat t-shirt. The episode of Dynamite in which aired the footage averaged 819,000 viewers, up 8.9% from last week. It's the best audience total the show has had since February 28th. Dynamite drew a 0.3 rating in the 18-49 demo and finished third on the night among original programs on cable. That's up 30.4% from last week and ties the highest rating the show has done in that category since January 17th. The most hype thing being, of course, AEW airing backstage footage of CM Punk and Jack Perry's altercation. Some more AEW news. Will Ospreay has fired back at WWE CCO Paul Triple H Levesque for insinuating that Ospreay is, quote, not in it for the grind. Ospreay used his promo time on Wednesday's AEW Dynamite show to respond to a thinly veiled jab from Triple H that seemed to be directed at Ospreay in a Pat McAfee show appearance last Friday. In discussing not landing an unnamed free agent, Triple H said, quote, when I see people that come out of trying to make it and then they pick the job where they go, well, they work less, the schedule is lighter. All right, I'm glad I didn't get you because if you're not in it for the grind, at that point early in your career, you have no business being here. In Osprey's response, he noted that he is delivering in the ring and posed a theory as to how Triple H rose to the position of Chief Content Officer of WWE, saying, I am delivering some of the best professional wrestling matches this world has ever seen. Normally, I wouldn't rise to this type of bait, but seeing as the guy who said it is only in the position he is in because he was grinding on the boss's daughter, you are in no position to tell me what the grind is all about, my friend, because you have no idea what I fight for. So let this be a painful little jab back and a gentle reminder that you do not throw stones at an assassin with a machine gun. Osprey then went on to hype his pay-per-view match with Brian Danielson, which is set for Dynasty on Sunday, April 21st. Before Dynasty, Will Ospreay is also set for a first-time ever matchup against Claudio Castagnoli. Tony Khan has announced that Osprey vs. Claudio will take place on Dynamite next Wednesday. It's the final episode of the show before AEW's Dynasty pay-per-view. And speaking of AEW pay-per-views, AEW has revealed its entire pay-per-view schedule for the remainder of 2024. After debuting last year, Wrestle Dream and World's End are both returning. Wrestle Dream is still being held at the state of Washington, but will take place in Tacoma instead of Seattle. It's set for Saturday, October 12th. World's End will be held in Orlando, Florida on Saturday, December 28th. There are eight AEW pay-per-views in total from now until the end of the year. The first being Dynasty on April 21st, followed by Double or Nothing on May 26th, then Forbidden Door Sunday, June 30th, the original plan was reportedly for Forbidden Door to be held at Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens. The show is still set for New York, but will instead take place from the UBS Arena in Long Island. On Sunday, August 25th, All In London will be held once again at Wembley Stadium. 
followed by All Out September 1st at the Now Arena in Hoffman Estates. Like last year, All In and All Out are taking place on back-to-back -back weekends. October 12th will be Wrestle Dream in Tacoma, November 23rd, Full Gear at the Prudential Center, and last but not least, December 28th, World's End. Additionally, a match for the Continental Championship is now official for AEW Dynasty. On Dynamite, Kazuchika Okada accepted Pac's challenge for a match on April 21st in St. Louis. Pac came out and the two had a stare down. Pac started to head to the ring but was jumped by the Young Bucks. FTR came out for the save but was taken out by Okada with a steel chair. The Young Bucks hit the EVP trigger on FTR while Okada struck Pac with the chair to finish the segment. Last month, Pac made his return to the company, saving Eddie Kingston and Pentel Cero Miedo from an attack from the Young Bucks and Okada. On this past weekend's collision, Pac issued the challenge for the Continental title. Switching gears over to some WWE news. Before WrestleMania 40, Drew McIntyre sent out a tweet that some assumed was just another troll. Drew claimed that UPS lost his ring gear and he used the opportunity to mock CM Punk, asking if he could borrow some trunks since the injured Punk wouldn't need them. Special effects artist Jason Baker revealed on Tuesday that McIntyre legitimately lost his gear before WrestleMania. Baker's wife, Mandy, who is a production designer, worked all night on Saturday so that McIntyre would have have new gear for his match against Seth Rollins. Following his return to the ring on Saturday on the first night of WWE WrestleMania 40, Dwayne The Rock Johnson earned nearly 97,000 shares of TKO stock, currently worth over $9 million. The news was revealed in an SEC filing that came out late Tuesday, required as Johnson sits on the TKO board. The 96,558 Class A shares fully vested Sunday, putting Johnson at 193,116 total shares owned according to the filing. The shares were part of Johnson's January 2024 deal to join the TKO board as the shares vested upon completion of certain services described in that independent contractor services and merchandising agreement. Those services are assumed to be Johnson's match that saw him team with Roman Reigns to take on Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins and all of the lead up to the match itself. The January arrangement also included him gaining full IP ownership of the Rock name in addition to other character related trademarks. After Saturday's show, Johnson said that he wasn't done with in-ring action and on Monday's WWE Raw, he told Cody Rhodes that he would be coming for him at some point. The Rock is headed back to Hollywood to work on the A24 Smashing Machine movie and then the live action Moana after that. It's unknown if Johnson will continue to earn best in stock for future matches. And as expected, WWE WrestleMania 40 was a massive financial success for TKO in their first such one under the new ownership regime. The company sent out a release Tuesday pointing to several key highlights in what they are saying is the most successful and highest grossing event in the company history. In the release, TKO stated this year's WrestleMania broke last year's gate record Record by 78%, but did not provide the actual gate revenue. The company reported last year's two-night event brought in more than $21.6 million in gate revenue, which would mean this year's two-night event generated nearly $38.5 million in gate revenue. They did not provide a per-night breakdown of the gate number, but Paul Triple H Levesque said Saturday that night one broke the company's single-night gate record in WWE history, which was previously held by WrestleMania 32's 17.3 million. They announced 145 298 in total attendance at Lincoln Financial Field, which has yet to be independently corroborated. Other reported highlights include that viewership was up 41%. However, a breakdown of the Peacock versus International WWE Network viewers was not provided, nor a definition of what viewership means to TKO. Merchandise sales hit a new record up more than 20% over last year's WrestleMania 39. No financial specifics were provided. In its first year, the company's WWE World Fan Event in partnership with Fanatics Event was the highest grossing and most attended fan event in company history. They also reiterated the strength of the Go Home SmackDown, largest gate in SmackDown history, 
Raw After WrestleMania, largest gate in Raw history, and Saturday's NXT Stand and Deliver, which was the most attended NXT ever, with an announced 16,545 people. However, they did not announce that the NXT gate was the largest ever. And that's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to F4W Online for plenty more pro wrestling coverage. And I'll catch you on the next video.